Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ryan Retro channel. In today's video we're going to be setting up Retro Arch, or as I like to call it, Ryan Retro Arch. Retro Arch can be quite intimidating for some people and it was for me too, so I understand that. But I'm going to break it down in a very simple way so you can get set up with Retro Arch on your Retro Pocket 5 or any Android device you might be using. So first of all, let's open the RetroArch application. I'm using the 64 application, but the 32-bit one should be the same. So opening RetroArch, you're going to see this screen. And the first thing we're going to do is change the theme to look like a PSP or PlayStation 3 theme. So to do that, let's tap the settings cog. Let's go to user interface. Down at the bottom where it says menu, let's tap that. And we're going to change it to XMB. So let's tap XMB. Now choose the home icon over here, scroll down to the bottom and choose quit retro arch. That's going to quit and update your settings. So now when you open the app again, you'll be greeted with this familiar PlayStation style menu. So to set up retro arch, there's only two real things we need to do and I've made it very simple for you. This is my Ryan retro arch setup guide. We need to install cores and add our games. Adding games will be really simple, and installing cores is also simple, but most of the confusion for many people comes with, what is a core? So you can think of a core like an emulator, the thing we use to play the games. So, in my previous setup guide, I showed you how to set up various emulation apps. For example, if I want to play GameCube, I use the Dolphin emulator, and here are all my GameCube games. If I want to play Dreamcast games, I use ReDream. That's my Dreamcast emulating app. And here are my Dreamcast games. And if I want to play PlayStation 1, I use DuckStation. That's my PlayStation 1 emulator. So like how we have different apps for all of those systems, we will use different cores for all of those systems. So now jumping back into Retro Arch, if we go all the way over to the left and all the way up to the top, so the very first menu item, we have Load Core. So we're going to select that. And right now we don't have any cores. We need to download some. So let's go down to download a core and choose that. And you're going to be met with so many cores to pick from, it might be overwhelming. Thankfully, there are many useful guides on the internet which recommend some useful cores to use. For this video, I'm going to use this list from the Retro Game Core YouTube channel. Russ is a very knowledgeable, smart man, and I trust his choices. So for now, let's just put a few together for demonstration purposes. Let's begin with a Sega Dreamcast core. So the recommended one is Flycast. So this list is alphabetical. If you scroll down and find Sega Dreamcast, here you can see Sega Dreamcast slash Naomi Flycast. So if we choose that option, you'll see down the bottom left, it's downloading and it's now installed. It happens only in a second or two. So that's one core already done. You just downloaded your first core, congratulations. Let's just go through and add a few more while we're here. For Sony PlayStation, we have the options of Beetle PSX HW, Beetle PSX, PCSX Rearmed or Swan Station. So using the guide, you can see the recommended cores are Duck Station, which doesn't seem to be here right now, Swan Station or PCSX Rearmed. So I'm just going to pick Swan Station because I like the sound of the name. So let's choose that. And down the bottom, you'll see it loading in and it's done. So now we downloaded two cores, let's try them out. So we're going to go back. Now when we choose load core, you'll see our two cores are here. We have the Dreamcast core and the PlayStation core. So now that we have our cores installed, we need to add our games. So in order to add our games, we're going to scroll along till we find this little plus icon here, and we're going to choose scan directory. Let's choose that. And we'll now navigate to where our games are. And this is all of your games. So for me, my games are located in a folder called ROMs on my SD card. Looking down the list, I have this storage slash 61633239. That is the name of my SD card. I don't know why it's called that, but that's what it's called. So let's choose that. And then we'll go down to ROMs and choose that. And then once you get into the correct folder where all of your games are, you can then choose scan this directory. So I will choose that option and you'll see down the bottom left, the progress bar. And this might take a little while, as you can see in my case, it's scanning 295 games. And if you have more than that, it might take a while. So I will just leave that for a minute and drink some water and we'll come back when it's scanned all the games. 
That actually took quite a long time, but I got a message saying scanning is finished. So now if we go back and we move across, you're going to see we have some Dreamcast games with the little Dreamcast icon there. We also have our PlayStation 2 games, PSP games, and PlayStation 1 games. As you add more cores, you will see more systems populated. So let's just add one more to demonstrate that. Let's go back to the left-hand side, back to the very first option, Load Core. I will go down to Download Core. And this time I want to add my Genesis games. So let's go down to the Sega Master System slash Genesis. And the recommended core is Genesis Plus GX. So let's press our Accept button to download that. You'll see the message in the bottom left. Already it is done, so let's go back. Now if you choose Load Core again, you will see it's been added to the list. Now when you scroll along, you'll see the games are not here. So in order to get them to appear, we're going to need to scan the directory again. Now I don't want to scan hundreds or thousands of files again, so I would recommend scanning the directory after you already added all of the cores. This time around, I just added one new core, which was the Genesis slash Mega Drive core. So I will choose Scan Directory, and this time, instead of scanning all of my ROM folders, I will go down to my SD card, ROMs, and now I will just select the Genesis folder that has my Genesis games in it. So now by choosing the Genesis folder and choosing scan this directory, we'll now scan the games and that only took one second. So let's go back. Now when we go back to the home screen, you'll see we have a new Genesis controller icon and here are all my Genesis games. RetroArch will take a little bit of time loading up the box art, and when you're ready to play a game, you can simply just select it and choose Run. It will ask what core you want to use to play it on, because some people like to collect a few, as some do better with certain games. We just downloaded this one core for Genesis, the Genesis Plus GX core, so let's select that and choose Run, and now we'll get into our game. RetroArch will automatically put a controller overlay in case you're playing on a phone with no controller. But as we have a controller, let's turn this off. You can press the little RetroArch icon down here. Sometimes it's a bit finicky and flashes on and off like this, so you might need to hold it down. We're only going to need to do this one time. So while keeping it held down, let's move down to close content and push the accept button. Now we're out of the game and let's turn off that controller overlay. Let's go back to the main menu, scroll over to the second option, which is our settings with a little cog icon. Scroll up to the very top option, user interface. The very first option again, on-screen display. Go down to on-screen overlay, and we're just going to toggle this off. So the first option says display overlay, just toggle it off. Now when we get into a game, this time let's go to Dead or Alive 2. Let's choose Run and which core do you want to use? We want to use the Dreamcast core because it's a Dreamcast game. So let's set that and run. Now there will be no on-screen overlay and you'll be playing your game. And that is the basic RetroArch setup. You can now add any cores and any games you wish. If you want to add more cores to play more games, simply choose Load Core, go down to Download a Core, and then pick one from the recommended list. If you want to add more games, simply move over to the plus icon, scan directory, and then just navigate to the folder those games are in. And that's it, that's all you need to know. There are many more guides on YouTube that go very in depth to every nook and cranny and detail of RetroArch, but for today, I just wanted to get you set up playing games in RetroArch. And if you follow this guide, you will be doing just that. So thank you for watching, I hope it was helpful. If it was, please give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment below and I'll see you again tomorrow for another video. And if you'd like to pick up the device I used in this video, the Retroid Pocket 5, you can go to the official Retroid website using the affiliate link in the description and buy one at the same place I bought this one. Thank you very much for watching everyone and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.